Okay, so quickly go through chapter five. Talk about friction, drag forces, and elasticity, stress and strain. So friction is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces in contact. If surfaces are moving, we call it kinetic friction. If the force is being applied before something starts moving, you have static friction. Okay, so that's the difference, kinetic friction and static friction. Um, if you move in this direction, there will be a force of friction opposing your motion. Okay, so friction always opposes the force being applied. Um, before it starts moving, it's called the static force, and it's related to the normal force, how heavy an object is, how much weight is between the, the object and the surface of the, uh, uh, whatever the surface it's on. And then, so the magnitude of this force of static friction is always less than or equal to that. So if you have a box here and you got a surface, the normal force of this is equal to the weight if it's on a flat surface. So that's your weight, your normal force equals your weight. So the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu sub s times this normal force, okay? Less than or equal to. Um, that means if I, if my, just to give you an example, if your weight is 9.8, let's say 10 newtons, and you apply a force of two newtons here, then you're not gonna go anywhere because your force of static friction um, is equal to two newtons. If you apply a 12 newton force, haha, -ha, your 12 newtons, 12 newtons is going to be greater than, um, greater than the 10 newtons that the static friction force can overcome. So then you're gonna, you'll be able to get the thing started. But initially by ap applying a 12 newton force to your box, friction will apply a negative 10 newton force to it until it gets moving. That's, so your max force of friction is the normal force times that thing. And as long as you apply that force, you can get the object moving. Once you get it moving, your uh, friction is gonna be less than um, that because this coefficient of friction is lower for kinetic motion than it is for static motion. So what does this mean? The force of friction, static friction, is mu sub s times the normal force. And the force of kinetic friction is the same mu sub k times the normal force. Sorry, the same normal force times this mu sub k. And what you see is that the force of static friction is one for dry concrete and on rubber. But once you start moving, the static friction is less, 30% less, right? It's 0.7 instead of one. So that means in this case, we have the normal force times one. Coefficient is one. In this case, we have 0 0.7 times the normal force. So that means our force of friction is lower once we start moving. Um, so what does that mean? It means that if we want to ask a question like how much force, let's say we have a box sitting on the ground and it weighs 10 kilograms, how much force do we need to apply to overcome the uh, force of friction? So let's say this is a um, rubber on concrete. Um, so that means it's sitting still. We're going to apply a force to it. We need to overcome whatever the force of friction is. The force of friction is going to be equal to mu sub s times the normal force. Okay, what's the normal force? It's the weight. It's a 10 kilogram thing. So we're going to be 10 kilograms times 9.8, 98 newtons. So the force of static friction is going to be 1 times 98 newtons. So we better apply a force um, that's greater than 98 newtons in order to get it to move. If we do that, if we apply a 98 newton force to this thing and it starts sliding, now the question is what does the force of friction become after applying a 98 newton force? And that force of kinetic friction is gonna be 0 0.7 times 98 newtons because it's gonna be 0 0.7 mu sub k times the normal force. So this force of friction is going to be 0 0.7 times uh, 98, so about, uh, so it'll be about, um, about 70 newtons, somewhere in there. Okay, so now, once we start moving, if we continue to apply a 98 newton force, friction is only gonna ap apply a negative 70 newton force against our motion. Whoop, once we're moving, we got a minus 70 newton force, that's the force of kinetic friction. We're still pulling with a 98 newton force, so look at that, we've got 28 newtons of force equals ma, so we're gonna have an acceleration now. Um, 28 newtons divided by the 10 kilogram mass. So we're gonna have an acceleration of 2.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's how this force of friction business uh, works. It only, it always opposes the motion 
and it's always uh, magnitude depends on the normal force. Now remember the normal force changes if your object is at an angle. The normal force, you've got your weight down, your normal force is the component, W cosine theta, man, my handwriting, W cosine theta is the component up. Uh, and so your normal force becomes that. So your force of friction on an incline is normally um, mu sub s times mg cosine theta. And then your force down is mg sine theta uh, down the slope. Okay, if you don't understand that, go back and watch the earlier videos with the incline on it. Uh, okay, so that's a great problem. We've got our uh, example skier. We went over that in class. Um, and uh, what's actually happening, right, um, with the force of friction is that at, at a small area, a small zoomed in area, you have actual contact forces that the structures are bending each other. Okay, we're not going to talk too much about drag forces, but drag forces, what you really care about, and the only thing you should be thinking about is that the drag force depends on V squared. So if you travel 70 miles an hour, or and then you dra travel 75 miles an hour, um, you're going up every extra mile an hour by uh, the drag forces increasing squared. Okay, so um, if this was 70, then 70 squared. If you're at 75, then 75 squared. Okay, so um, the drag force, every extra mile an hour you go. So that's why, you know, cars are designed to go 70 miles an hour aerodynamically to optimize MPGs. That's the speed limit on the highways. If you go 80, um, you, that you're getting 100 times uh, sm less uh, gas mileage. Okay, uh, 10 squared, right? 10, 100 times worse aerodynamic uh, uh, quantity, okay? So, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, I think I'm right about that. You better check. All right. Um, yeah, so there's your aerodynamics, your different things, your drag coefficients. <coughs> wow. Excuse me. Oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, uh, so these are typical drag coefficients. Okay, skipping, moving on. Um, you got your swim skin suits tries to make you slipperier, more slipperier in the water, reduce your drag, so it'll help you go faster. 10% less drag, that's pretty good. You go a lot, break some world records um, with those suits on. Um, anyway, terminal velocities there. What is terminal velocity? Uh, terminal velocity is when the drag force equals the weight, and so as you fall out of the sky, that's you, okay, I didn't do a great job. You're falling, gravity's pulling you down, but the force of air is pushing back up, so you're balanced, um, and that's what you get here is mg minus ft. So that means weight is equal to the drag force. If the drag force is this thing, and uh, these coefficients are whatever they are, for a skydiver, feet first. For a skydiver, horizontal, it's either 0.7 or 1. Um, so, you know, you can figure out your skydiver head first or feet first is the same. Um, then you can figure out what your terminal velocity would be uh, for a uh, whatever skydiver. Okay, yada yada yada. Elasticity, stress, and strain. So what this means is when you apply a force to something, it's going to be deformed. It's going to change a little bit. Um, and uh, the tensile strength is the stress to cause some deformation. Um, and so let's say you put a weight on a spring, it goes from an, an original length of L and it stretches by an extra bit delta L. So um, you can use this equation here to figure out what your change in length is gonna be. It's just gonna be the original length times the force that you apply per area of the object um, times some stiffness coefficient y, one over y, okay? And that'll, that allows you to calculate the um, amount of change uh, something. So you got a surface area, like a cylinder or a spring, you apply a force. What's the area you apply the force to? Force per area, that's gonna be force divided by pi r squared. If it's a circle like that, that's the area of a circle. And then um, it has an original length L, and then you're gonna change it by uh, delta L to make it shorter. And so you're gonna multiply one over y, and then that's gonna be the change in length if you multiply by the original length. So this is gonna be a percentage of the original length. Whatever the original length is, you're gonna get your total change from there. Okay, so that makes sense. Y depends on the material. Different materials have different stiffnesses. Um, and so here's your different stif stiffnesses, Y. Um, there's also shear and bulk deformations. 
but it's the same equation. Um, well, this is the same equation here. Um, there you go. Shear deformation is when you have an original box of this length and you want to displace it a delta x there. You put that in here and it depends on this uh, s, the forces there. And uh, then you have the bulk change. You change in volume is this the original volume times 1 over b. Volume is length times width times height usually or 4 thirds pi r cubed for a sphere um, and so on. So you can solve all those uh, problems. Okay, so in summary, you've got two forces of friction, one static, one kinetic. So before you get something moving, you have to defeat that force. Once you get something moving, um, you just have to maintain a force higher than that to keep it, either equal to that or higher than that to keep it uh, moving. Um, if it's higher than that, you'll get an acceleration. If it's equal to that, you'll just keep it moving. Uh, drag forces are just this equation. The important thing is they go like V squared. So every extra mile an hour you go, um, you're increasing your drag forces significantly. Um, and then stress and strain, you've got your three equations, they're exactly the same. The change in length by compressing something is that. The change in length by um, uh, shearing something is that. The change in volume is that, okay? And uh, uh, so on. Okay, that's the end, bye.